Gospel chapter 1, verse 21, and I'm reading from the New King James this morning. It reads as such, and she shall, and she will rather, bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings that you have restored upon we, your people. You have been blessed right to ourselves, whereby we're glad of that. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you mean to us. You are all and all. You are everything. One says you, God Almighty, which means El Shaddai. You are more and enough. Yes. God, we pray, God, you open the ears of the hearers, the hearts of the receivers, that your word will fall on good and fertile ground that produce fruit in days to come. God, I pray you keep me humble, obedient, submissive, and sensitive to your spirit. Keep me humble, obedient, keep me ever at the foot of the cross, where you give the glory and the honor and the life of me, your servant. I pray, God, you will speak, God. But I serve here to speak fresh manner from on high. Speak a fresh word, God. We will energize, uplift, and encourage this your people, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, my words, and my thoughts be your words and your thoughts. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These blessings we ask in Jesus' mighty and awesome name we pray. And we do thank you. Amen. You receive the Lord. Verse of scripture again in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will or shall save his people from their sins. For the time that we do share together, my brothers and my sisters, I want to talk for the subject of. The meaning of a name. 
the meaning of a name. Before I go any further, you ought to know what your name means. Right. I know we got names now we can't even pronounce, let alone spell. But what, is the, what does your child's name really mean? That they will live with the rest of their lives. And how will their name that you give your child impact, watch this, other people? Mm -hmm. We give these babies names and, and it has no impact. We really can't pronounce it. Then you, you can't pronounce it, so you give a little baby a little short name. <laughs> little, little, little short name for the long name, which has no substance to mankind. In the text, my brothers and sisters, there's a meaning of a name that has impact, that has some stuff, substance. I want to pour out three points in verse number 21 with some supporting scriptures and extend an invitation. Point number one, he tells the gender of the baby without ultrasound. The angel tells Joseph the gender of the baby without ultrasound. I recall with one of my sons, we had an ultrasound done. Now watch this. The baby has to be so many weeks old before you can tell the gender of the baby from the ultrasound. Generally, they say you have to be 16 weeks somewhere in the neighborhood before they can actually tell the gender of the baby. I remember one of my sons, we were just later to find out what the gender of the baby was going to be. We looked at the ultrasound, and it's different now than it was when my son was born. They gave you a little picture. You had to make out this little picture and all this stuff. And they would tell you what the gender of the baby is. I went this year. It was invited to the ultrasound of the Doobie Sisters. <laughs> they actually have this thing so technology technical and technology has advanced in years, you can actually see a lot of stuff. You can see uh, the actual making up of the baby, fingers, toes, and, and eyes, and the whole nine yards. You can see all that. And when you got twins, you can even see the one who's hiding behind the other one uh, in the ultrasound. You can see all that technology from an ultrasound. But guess what? In verse 21, he went beyond the ultrasound. Does not, did not, does not need ultrasound to tell the gender of the baby. Says, point one says, she shall, or she will bring forth a son. Notice it could have said she will bring forth a baby. But because, watch that, I'm using another word. Super ultrasound, supernatural ultrasound, told what the gender of the baby was to be. Second point is the angel tells Joseph what name to name the baby. I think we ought to ask God before they are born, God, what should I name my son or my daughter? And so Joseph gets instructions from the angel to call his name Jesus. You shall call his name Jesus. <laughs> the word call in the text means to give a name to. 
Watch this. This is why it's very important that you know what you're naming your child. The name here in this verse number 21 when he says, you should call him Jesus. This name means authority all right, all right, all right. and character. All right. We got babies who have no authority and who have no character. All right. Running around in elementary schools are terrible. I'm going to say something else. Don't get mad at me, but it don't matter. You ought to give your child back to God. Uh -huh. Don't get me when I say this. When you give your, God, your child back to God, you ought to bring yourself in the church to bring your child in the church. That's what we're talking Because if you keep your, you get, watch this, if you dedicate your child to God and you don't show up to church, don't expect your child to be somebody. In God. Amen. Uh, Amen. Expect your child to be something in God. Right. If you don't bring them up in church. I'm going old school. Because when we were born, when we were grew up, those who came in my era, they, our parents brought us to church. Amen. Yeah, we were hooked. Amen. We were on drugs. We were drugged to church. All right. <laughs> Let me explain that. Whether we want to go or not, they made us go to church. And let me, let me say this, I appreciate the way they did, because I have a love for the church. And that's why when I do now, when I do dedication babies, I say, wait a minute, before you do it, because we say, are you going to bring your baby up in the, in the admonition, in the, in the fear of God? And they say, yes. And then after that, after that consecration day, that uh, dedication day, you don't see them as a baby no more. All right. You done lie to God and the church. Right. How about that? Amen. And so, I counsel them, if you're not going to bring that baby back to church after the consecration, don't, no, I'm not doing it. And I did that, and I got, somebody got mad at me. Because it's, this is holy work. All right. This is holy business. And when it's too late in the evening to, to, to do crazy stuff that's not out, that's out of the will of God. We will have it anymore. I got to show some, y'all need some relief, some foundation first. All right. Don't mean even though you bring your child in church, up in church, don't mean they're gonna be an angel. Let's clarify that real quick. Let's bring some clarity right now. But your son or your daughter has a foundation. And I recall somebody said they, they may stray away. Yes, sir. But that, that seed that is planted in me will always be there. That seed is the word of God. I don't care how far they get away from you yes. and God. The seed that has been planted in them yes. will germinate and they will reflect back. Wait. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yes, God. yeah. They will remember what Mama said. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. They will remember what Daddy said. I know you're right, man. They will remember that because it will come back come like a flashback. And then as you keep praying for them, God will touch their hearts and touch their lives so they can claim back to God. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever give up on your child. I heard the late Bishop Ross Sr. say, he said, don't you ever give up on your child. No matter how bad they get, how far they stray, you don't give up on your child. Still works. He may not come when you and I want him to, but prayer does work. Let me go to something I saw last night on TV, just brought the joy to my heart. You need to get a prayer room. Get a war room. Pray. Stop talking and start praying. Stop talking about Saturday ain't gonna be no good. You start telling God, God, my son, I'm 
He come to save our actions and he come to save our mind. Yeah. All right. His assignment is to save us. And, and, and you hear preachers say, oh, is that you couldn't find nobody else. Couldn't find Isaiah wasn't good enough. Jeremiah wasn't good enough. Uh, oh, then. Okay, that's good. That's great. No matter, nevertheless, I've been king. All right. Amen. They say that he, he sent his son because he couldn't find nobody else. Right. Nobody good enough. And actually, that's correct. Amen. Because he came into the world without any sin. Yes. A person who knew no sin, who died for our sins. Yes. A man who knew no sin, but died for our sins. Yes. He carried our sins upon him. Watch this. Isaiah, you all know this one, and I'll close it. The Lord said this in. Isaiah 9 and 6. Talks about him too. Says this. And this verse really means something. And I got some nuggets from this verse, but I also got some nuggets. Somebody sent me a card. And I'm going to read what the card says about Jesus. And I'll be through the Lord said this thing. Isaiah 9 and 6 says this, For unto us a child <coughs> is born. Yeah. Unto us, here goes again, a son is given. Right. Oh, yeah. It gives affirmation, confirmation that they tell the gender of the child. Yeah. Watch this. And the government, and the government all right, all right. shall be upon his shoulder. I want to give you a peace of mind. I know we get frustrated with the guy who's in office right now. But guess what? He's not in control. Right. 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 He's literally not in control. May he may think he's in control, but he's not in control. The Bible says that he, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes. Can I read Re Revelation 12 and 5? It says this. She bore, here it goes, a male child. They go to, they go to center, center ground. <laughs> she shall bear a male child. All right, yeah. who, watch, who shall rule, watch this, nations. All right, all right. Not only America, yeah, all right. also Russia, all right. also China, all right. also Mexico. He shall rule the nations with a rod of arm. And her child was called up to God on his throne. Don't you worry about even the, the persons in Congress or in Senate. God is still in control. God is still in control. And watch as we keep going on in, in, in Isaiah. Goes on with that name again. Tells him about the government should be upon his shoulders. Then he says, in Isaiah, he says, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Yes. Not only shall be called Wonderful, but it also be, shall be called Counselor. Yes. Not only Wonderful Counselor, but also Mighty God. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you worry about that. God is getting in control. He's wonderful. He's the counselor. And he is the mighty God. He is all sufficient. Because the word almighty means he is sufficient. <laughs> That's good news. That's right, people. That's good news. That's good news. All the bad news we hear in the world. That's good news. That's good news. Well, not only that, but it goes on. Not only is he. Almighty God, but He's the everlasting Father. Y'all say, y'all say, yeah, yeah. say yeah. 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 He's an everlasting Father. Yeah. It means that He has no end to what He does and to who He is. There is no end. Yeah. Everlasting Father. Yeah. And the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Oh, some of us, it's been a crazy year. Yeah, it's yeah, been crazy. We wonder if we're going to make it through the year. Through this year 2017 that has swiftly been passing through. We're on the 24th day of December. It's been a rough year. But I want to let you know that God will give you peace in the midst of a storm. In the midst of trials, in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of whatever's going on in your life, God will give you peace. Remember the Bible says in New Testament, He will give you peace that surprises all understanding. When you Because God has given you peace. Right. 
Ephesians 2 and 14 says this. For he himself is our peace. Yes. Let me stop right there for a moment because so long as you and I got Jesus, we got peace. Jesus. The world doesn't have the peace we have. Let me say no, let me say a little song. I'm gonna sing it. A little song we used to sing. This joy that I have, yes. the world can give it, and the world can't take away. And that was the song that said, I refuse to allow the enemy to steal my joy. I refuse to allow the enemy to steal my joy. He is my Prince of Peace. He is my peace. He is my joy. Even in the midst of circumstances. Well, as I close my little message, what can we find in Jesus? I got this from a car. Someone sent me. Then somebody else sent me the same car just the other day. I just want to share this with y'all. Then I'm just close my little message. The Lord said the same. What we find in Jesus. We find peace and the Prince of Peace. We find righteous and the righteous one. We find counsel and the counselor. We find wonders and the wonderful one. We find salvation and the Savior. We find the kingdom and the king. And as I about to close, this is this. In Jesus we find, we find more gifts than our heart can imagine. I know you'll get some gifts on tomorrow. But I want to let you know the greatest gift that any of us can have is Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I, the, 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 the things that, that, that Jesus brings to our lives is more than what we'll get tomorrow. And let me tell you something, if you don't get what you want tomorrow, don't worry about it. You got Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you got enough. Yeah, you got enough in Jesus. Well, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is the reason for the season. It's more to the mall, somebody's going to do a last minute drive by today. Come on, somebody. I'm, 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 I'm almost about to do that. I don't know yet. Because uh, I thought of something. But we might do a last minute drive by to the mall after church. But I want to let you know that Jesus is the reason for the season. If it had not been for Jesus, we would not have this season. But I think God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah.